Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. You are all making Gotham great again by getting your news here. I know you'd like to watch The Liars at CNN and MSNBC and Fox and everybody else, but you're here with me wearing a t-shirt in my apartment um, because I won't wear collared shirts because that is the costume of the ruling class. And I think I look like a kid at picture day in grade school. But that's not the point why uh, we're here today. Uh, very um, happy to have a returning guest to the show, uh, Tiffany Fitzhenry. Tiffany, how you doing? Hey, doing great, thanks. Um, so we had you on the show uh, talking about the CIA uh, infiltration of Hollywood, and there's obviously some overlap into Jeffrey Epstein, but you've done, you, you've found this, this because obviously the corruption of the ruling class, and we've found too with Epstein, there's ties to the CIA, there's ties to Misogeline Maxwell's uh, father, <laughs> and, um, and the fake modeling agencies, uh, Les Wexner with Victoria's Secret, and the, how modeling has been used for uh, sex trafficking and, and pedophiles and all this awful stuff. So let's get into what you've discovered um, through your research about uh, Jeffrey Epstein. I, I was very um, much all over those first documents that became unsealed. That's kind of, that's where I, for me, where the rubber meets the road. Give me documents, you know, give me court documents, unseal things, declassify things. Uh, because like you said, the news is useless. I mean, right. It's absolutely useless. So, when those 2,000 documents were unsealed about a couple of months ago. August we were, 9th, is it the, those documents that had? It, a, I think it was about August 9th. The day I before think, he was murdered? Right, virtually right before he was murdered. The 2,000 or so um, court documents of the deposition of Virginia Roberts and all that. I was just absolutely blown away by the amount of interesting things that were in there that pertain to just, for example, Hollywood and celebrities and people that we are thinking of in one way, but yet they're consorting with uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. So you got just this one little paragraph that talked about um, where Virginia Roberts was being deposed and she was being asked, did you meet Al Gore? This is as her time as a child sex slave while she was working sensibly and, um, so this is while she was a sex slave for Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, this and this is, is her, okay. And this was the court that was when she um, ended up settling out of court with Jalene Maxwell. It's from that case, right? Where yeah, they, okay. From previous, it's from previous. And it was, did you meet Al Gore? Yes. Did you meet Naomi Campbell? Yes. Did you meet Heidi Klum? Yes. And for me, I'm just sitting here going, and there was another celebrity too. Uh, Heidi Klum, but but these two models, right? And I started thinking, gosh, just over the last year, I haven't thought about Naomi Campbell in 10 years, right? And then in the last year and a half, there she is hanging out with John of God. You remember the whole John of God story that came out about a year ago? Wasn't he, was he a cult leader? So he had this place down in Brazil where he was doing these psychic surgeries and healings and things like that. But there was this journalist named Sabrina Bittencourt who, you know, pieced together the story that he was actually like farming babies and had a sex slave operation where he was selling babies around the world to the highest bidder. This, I mean, I, I should go ahead and tweet this, you know, again, because people really forgot about this story. And all of these pictures surface of Naomi Campbell down there at his compound. This is where Oprah went and people were giving Oprah a lot of flack. Like, why were you elevating this guy? How could you not know what was going on there? So it was a big deal. That was the first thing I was like, what is Naomi Campbell? Then there she is palling around with Harvey Weinstein. She's very close with Harvey Weinstein. She's very close with Kevin Spacey. Very close. You know, it's like as the year went by and we kept saying, seeing, okay. And then I see these, you know, documents that mention her and then pictures surface um, from this same trove, there were pictures included in these court documents, and they were of Naomi. Uh, there were pictures of Naomi Campbell's uh, 41st birthday party, or one of her birthday parties. Ghislaine Maxwell was there. Virginia Roberts, this little child, is there on this yacht with all these people. 
So a I child, don't... Virginia Roberts, as a yeah. child, when 12. she was 12, so she was a child and she was a sex slave, was on this yacht with Jeline Maxwell and Naomi Campbell. Yes. And these pictures are released, you know, in August. And I thought to myself, is there a chance that you're friends with this woman and you don't know she's an international child sex tracker? A. Also, is there a chance that you've got all of these people at your party, you've got um, uh, Maxwell's there, she's got this little girl with her. Is there a chance that you don't know that that child is a sex slave and is literally being trafficked at that moment, at your party, on your boat, for sex? Is, and I thought, no, there's really no chance that she didn't know. You know, just thinking, like deducing, you know, kind of lo using logic. And so I started to dig into her because of that, because Heidi Klum and her, and I thought, what are these models? Uh, because they're influential too, you know, just like the people in Hollywood. And now you have them becoming these moguls, right? Look at Heidi Klum. She's, she's an absolute mogul. And these people have influence over other people. And that's that whole same formula that we talked about. So I met a woman named Anna and she, she started shedding some light for me and on what that whole world is. Because of course, like you said, you have the Victoria's Secret connection. You have these modeling agencies that Jeffrey Epstein was funding. So I got really curious about what is this whole world of modeling and, you know, and she told me this insane story. Well, she told me a lot of insane stories, but one of them was how she was propositioned by a really powerful politician in Paris to here, we'll give you a building. You need to keep, you know, eight to 10 girls there. Presidents will come. Politicians will come. You won't have any problem with any illegal things, underage people, drugs, alcohol. You'll never, you know, the police will be not, not a problem. And they'll give her, you know, a diplomatic passport. She would own this place. You know, she'd be rich and she'd never worry about a thing. And she was like, no, thanks. But, you know, is this how it works? Is this what, you know, these people like Cindy Crawford, these people, what, is this what they go on to do? Are they involved in trafficking? Is this what Naomi Campbell's involved in? She's hanging out with traffickers. And, you know, these are just, these are valid questions considering the company they're keeping. Yeah, it's one thing to just, yeah, yeah, we've all been to a party and you, oh, you meet some, someone takes a photo and you're just, oh, whatever. But this is, this is way more than that. When you're at a yacht, you're, it's not just a, some party in someone's apartment and the neighbors popped in. You having a yacht party and these wealthy people are, you, and, and again, as you said in the, the other video we did about p people in Hollywood and show business, who have these ties to, uh, you know, powerful people, other, the real powerful people, their careers get elevated. And so it, 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 there's no way this is a coincidence. There's just no way. When I interviewed my, my friend, former detective, Eric Goldenberg, who was a child crimes investigator, he's like, Graham, I deal in facts, but there's no, there's not a lot of coincidence and stuff like this. Well, and two, you, you bring up a good point. There's no way, you know, that they don't know who these people are and what's going on. And also in those documents, it was revealed quite embarrassingly, or maybe not embarrassingly for George Clooney, but that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell would brag to Virginia Roberts that she would give, uh, she gave George Clooney a blowjob at an event, at a random event, in the bathroom at a random event. So I'm, then I'm thinking to myself, if you're familiar enough with a person to have them do a sex act on you, Mm -hmm. at a random event in the bathroom, is there a chance that you don't know they're an international child sex trafficker? Like, is there a chance you don't know that the woman giving you a blowjob is an international child sex trafficker? I mean, I, so that's what made me start thinking about George Clooney. So, you know, the, these people find their way onto my radar in various ways, but it's like, we need to be asking these questions. We need to be thinking these thoughts, even though the news is not telling us to. Uh, the logical person is going to read these documents and be like, hmm, that's interesting. I've never, I don't know one international child sex trafficker. And you can't swing a dead cat around Naomi Campbell without hitting a, an international child sex trafficker or sex predator. Yeah.
That's the other thing too. Any, I've never met any any of these. If I did, it was like in passing, and I have no idea. I've never hung out on anyone's yacht with an international child sex trafficker. I, I mean, this is just. I mean, it's it, it just goes on, and this whole ruling class world. You see it, like. So if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, two years after Jalene Maxwell settled out of court with Virginia Roberts, who accused Jalene of raping and trafficking her, um, along with another woman, Jalene Maxwell just happened to be invited to Chelsea Clinton's wedding. And, I mean, like, you're trying to tell me that Hillary, the mother of the bride, again, had no idea who was coming to the wedding of a child of a former president, there might be a security issue or two at that type of a wedding. This isn't at some Ramada in right. and off the freeway. Yeah, um, I think people were vetted. I mean, the people who were there were, it's safe to say they were vetted. Yes. So that they were there, if they were there, they were there intentionally. I mean, that is an absolutely safe thing to say. You've got secret service, you've got, you know. So... What else have you come across even recently connecting more people like Naomi Campbell uh, to Jeffrey Epstein? Um, just I started digging into that Africa trip, knowing how much George Clooney is all over the sort of African continent trying to tell us who we need to overthrow. You know, obviously now he's saying we need to overthrow the, uh, you know, the new government of South Sudan. I started looking at that Epstein trip to Africa that he took with Bill Clinton, but also Chris Tucker and Kevin Spacey. So this is um, so just so I'm just so we're clear here. So there was a trip to Africa on Jeffrey Epstein's plane with Chris Tucker, Kevin Spacey, and Epstein. All went to Africa together on Epstein's plane. Yes, and there was a young woman by the name of Chelsea Davies who was on the plane as well, and she has recently come out and started talking about the fact that she was being used as a sex slave and was being trafficked on that trip. So this thing is not over by any stretch of the imagination. And if you're paying attention even a little bit, but not to what the news is saying, to what people like you are saying, um, or if you're just reading the documents yourself, um, you know there's a reason the corporate media is not talking about this. There's a, you know, it implicates well, uh, so many powerful people the, there's about 10,000 documents that are expected to be coming out soon, very soon. We were waiting just about like the last four weeks for those documents to come out. So, and apparently there are hundreds of powerful people implicated in those documents. So where are these doc, these 10,000 documents that are waiting to come out? Where, where are they from? They're in this, uh, well, right now they're in this review process, but they will be unsealed. The judges ruled that they will be unsealed, but right now they're in some sort of review process. Who knows what's going on with that? But um, they are also from depositions. There have been a lot of depositions over the years. There have been a lot, you know, in terms of, it was 2008, I believe, right, where Jeffrey Epstein actually went to jail and there was the trial. That, I think that was around then. Yes. There was, you know, various... Uh, courts things over the years having to do with this particular witness, Virginia Roberts and, and, and several others who have come forward. So I guess they just have to do with all that stuff, but apparently hundreds of powerful people are named in them. So yeah, the, the, you, you pose a great question because I've said the same thing. It's why one of the reasons I'm interviewing you is I don't want, I'm not letting this go, but it's hard <laughs> when the corporate media, and I have no doubt, there's some, some of these CEOs of these massive telecommunication companies and these multinational conglomerates that control the media, they got, their names have to be in there somewhere. That's one of the reasons why we're not talking about this on the, oh, on yeah. the corporate media. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we stay on top of this and reveal new information when it's so hard to find because they're deliberately hiding it from us? What's so annoying is I never, uh, my life's goal is not to be a journalist, right? Like, but we've all had to become journalists. Yeah. I'm like, people are like, oh, you know, trying to tell me about things about being a journalist. I'm like, guess what I'm not? I'm not a journalist. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, I'm reading documents, I'm writing blogs about it, but you know, we, we all just have to, um, stay on top of it, but we have to read the released documents. That's the only way to know because the news is not doing it. So, for example, 
another, uh, you mentioned media people who were involved with Epstein, Geraldine and her husband, Kit Laybourne founded the oxygen network. They founded Nickelodeon. They were on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. They were in his black book. They were on the flight log. They went to the islands. This is Oprah's business partner founding the oxygen network, Geraldine Laybourne, Nickelodeon founded Nickelodeon. So let me tell you, it's like, it's such a bad look when you, you know, went to Jeffrey Epstein's Island, but you also preside over Nickelodeon. You've got Dan Schneider doing God knows what, what are we looking at? Like you said, these elites who, and what the heck are they? Yeah. And does the world run on children? Like, I don't know. We think we thought the world run, ran on the dollar or the money, you know, money, but it's almost like we're starting to get a different, you know, glimpse at what the elite really trade in. I don't know. It's 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 nightmarish to see this, and because and we've talked about this before. The thing that is so horrific about this Epstein case, and I think why some people just don't want to deal with, they don't want to face it, because it's not it's not just oh this one guy or these that one cult up in the mountains and we got them. They're all nuts or. Uh, Jerry Sandusky, one guy, like they, they, they always try to seal it off as just this sort of one creep lone wolf when it's like, no, 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 no. And the ruling elites, they, like you say, they're trading in, in children and sex trafficking and also in arms and money and power. So it's whatever, it's, it's like, it's pure evil. I mean, this is pure evil. This isn't, I mean, they, they, they sit and they plan this out. And like, you know, Jalene Maxwell had that fake um, non-for-profit about Save the Oceans. And part of it was getting 13-year-olds involved in the environment. Oh, man. you Like, so, and they would, they, they that's why John of God is in Brazil. That's why they have this, this creep islands, because they can scoop up poor kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw in one of the release documents of Jeffrey Epstein laughing that these poor families in France would just send their children over. And he's like, anyone, anyone can be bought. Like it, 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 it and then, and then the, the flight documents, they don't lie. So no. Bill Clinton said, oh, I was only on four times. That's four too many, by the way, but you were actually on 26 times, Bill. That's what the flight logs say. And now I'm finding out that Hillary Clinton, there's flight logs saying she was on two of his flights. And I don't think, I don't think you travel anywhere with Jeffrey Epstein and not know who and what he is. That's the, that's like, I lived in South Florida up until about 2009 and I knew who and what Jeffrey Epstein was. We knew, we knew, you know, in Palm Beach County, we knew this was going on. I'm sorry, but you don't, you're not the leader of the free world for, you know, eight years. And you, it's like you brought up with the wedding. When you're around people, there's going to be some sort of vetting process, right? It's all too much of a leap for us to take, for us to think that nobody knew anything. Right. You knew right. everything and you partook. It's very likely. And that is the point that you bring up about trying to keep everything compartmentalized. The point that we all have to start wrapping our head around is systems, systems, the elite have been able to control the monetary, the war. They've been able to control all of these things in our world, our content, our news, because of these systems that are revealing themselves, the systems of compromise and control, the systems of assets, how it all works. So we, we can't close our eyes you know, and compartmentalize things anymore. We have to connect dots. Epstein connects to Weinstein. It all connects. You know what I mean? These things all connect. This is all part of the same thing. And if we do that, you know, we can take apart this elite system. Mm. That's the point, you know, and it, I think that's what we're supposed to be doing right now is connecting dots. Yeah. Connecting dots and taking dots. Yeah. Cause they control the courts. They control the media. They control right. the banks. They control telecommunications. They control everything. I mean, they just, control everything and they are uh, diabolically evil. I mean, they're just, it's, it's wow. evil. And then you hear more about, and I, 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 I'm, I'm hesitant to bring this up because I don't want to sound like it's too, 
I don't know, horror movie or whatever, but a lot of them then talk like they're, they're Luciferians or there's some sort of satanic, like uh, um, human sacrifice element to some of this stuff. I mean, you see that drone footage of, of Epstein's island and that creepy circular thing with the rocks. I mean, you have to wonder what are, well, first there's a couple things to that. Yeah. And look historically as well. We've had elites ruling over this planet for a long time. I was just um, out of the country down in South America and I toured a ruins, right, of bygone civilization, the Mayan civilization. And I was like, oh my God, this is just like right now. It's the elites and they would do these sacrifices and they were, they had this whole system and I was like, is this literally what we still have? Is this how it's always been? And we just have to start wrapping our head around this. I don't know. I mean, I just think that it's so beyond the pale for us. We've been, it's, it, we've been put into this one world where we're the like, you know, Oh, here's your world and here's your little life. And you know, your kids go to their little school and they go to their little soccer and it's all great. But like just beyond this world, like just right on the other side is horrors untold. And it's like this whole illusion that we've been kept in where it's like, Oh, we're bombing Iraq, but that's okay. Your kids scored a goal and go to public and buy a sub. And so yummy. And, we're literally kept in this, like, especially Americans, especially Americans, because, and, and particularly Americans, I, I contend in, in my speeches that I give about Hollywood and all this information is that dollar for dollar, and we don't want to admit this, and we don't want to think this, but this is an unequivocal fact, dollar for dollar, we are the most propagandized humans as Americans to have ever lived in any civilization ever, bar none, ever. We're the most propagandized humans in human civilization. Yep. More money is spent shaping our minds and thoughts. You think they're propagandizing people in Ethiopia? No, everyone's got their role to play, right? right? And our role is to consent to all of it. Our role is to consent to the war, so they keep us, you know, but literally just on the other side of this world that we're given is how the world really runs. And we're... We're having to reconcile with that. Like, as Americans, we are having to uh, reconcile. And this is a reckoning of, nope, your leaders have been doing these things. And this is really what's been going on. And this is really what these charities they've been giving your money to. What were they doing in Haiti? Right. Where did all that money go? Where did the children go? Why do the elites always, you know, messing with children? We have to reconcile this. We don't want to, but... Again, like I said before, we're the adults of this planet. Who's going to do it, right? Yeah, we have to we speak up. Well, um, that's why I'm doing this show. That's why you're doing yours. And, you know, I really appreciate your work. So where can we, where do we keep our eye out for these 10,000 documents that are supposed to be released at any moment? Um, it, I will absolutely be posting them. So I'm keeping a lookout every day. So if people want to, you know, follow me, I'll be doing articles about it. I'm not letting this go. You know, you'll see them on my Twitter. I'll be posting screenshots. I'll be taking two days and reading them as soon as they come out and uh, reporting on it because nobody is. Right. And this is what we're supposed to be staying on top of. Other than that, I don't know. I don't know who. Uh, I have a few different news sources. Like I, I look at um, Julie K. Brown. She's with the Miami Herald. Yeah. She's been somewhat uh, informative about the court cases and the different things going on, but people can follow me on Twitter and, and, um, I'll definitely be sharing them. So to everybody watching, I'll put Tiffany's website in the show notes below. You can go to her website and follow her on social media. I follow her on Twitter. I suggest you do. I would also recommend Whitney Webb at Mint Press News. I've interviewed here several times about the Epstein case. She's done a very extensive showing all the ties to Acosta, William Barr. I mean, it's just, it's, she did, she did really shows the long game of this. But when these 10,000 documents are released, I'll go over them as well. And maybe we'll have you back on the show. Absolutely. I would love to. Whitney Webb's work is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. She's a powerhouse, man. So, uh, well, I appreciate uh, all the work you've done. Please follow uh, Tiffany Fitzhenry. 
uh, support her Patreon and all that stuff because she, her and I, look, we're, we're none of us, neither one of us get money from Pfizer or Raytheon or any, no one's, no, so we're completely dependent upon the viewers uh, to support the stuff that we do. So I always say, vote with your dollars, cut the cable, don't give the big telecoms your money and support shows like ours. Exactly. Um, thank you so much for watching. Everybody out there, please like, subscribe, share these videos. Uh, YouTube has been throttling my numbers, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you've done it several times. All my tour dates, I'm going to Australia in November with Ron Placone, and we've got shows in 2020 coming out. Uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Tucson, more stuff like that. So go to GrahamElwood.com for all my tour dates, and thank you so much for watching the show.